Good morning, everyone. Are we all here Good this morning? morning? Good morning. Good morning. Oh, it's wonderful to be here. Please put on your cameras so we can see all those beautiful faces. Welcome, welcome again. Oh, I see Dorothea sipping on some tea there, Dorothea. Not for you. <laughs> Lovely. It's great to see your wonderful faces again. Welcome. Saturday, the 22nd of May, 2021. It's another session of the Dream Big Girls Empowerment Program. It's indeed a pleasure to be here. My name is Simone Claxton, president and founder of the Sophia Miriam Foundation, hailing all the way from beautiful Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean. And we play that CARICOM song. We are one nation. Right, so we're going to all have our cameras on. Our mics will be muted until it's time to speak. So we're getting ready to start. It's now 10.20 Atlantic Standard Time. So we start with a prayer for Beverly. Good morning, everybody. Pleasant Saturday, good morning to you. Um, before I pray, I just want to read Psalm 139, verse 14. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. In another version, it says, I am wonderfully and fearfully made. This is our same scripture. So let's just welcome God's presence as we begin our next session. Father, we thank you for today. This is the day that you have made. And indeed, we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for all the young people who are here today, all the young ladies, Father, that, you are, that are here today. Thank you for the partners, our collaborators. And thank you for allowing us to serve into your kingdom. Lord, we thank you for the purpose that you've called us. And we know that you are pleased with what we are doing. Whatever we learn today, whatever is being deposited in the young ladies today, we thank you, God. We believe that you're going to use it to impact other young ladies just like them. So, Lord, guide us today. Cover us with your blood and give us wisdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very, very much, Beverly, for that. So, ladies, it's all about you. We've got a fun pack session today, diet and nutrition. Uh, we all have to eat. So we have to eat healthy, keep our bodies healthy and strong. And we have beauty and makeup. Okay. So it's going to be a wonderful fun pack session. That was a lovely song played. Um, it's not about the beauty on the outside. It's about us in the inside. Okay. So let's get started. We have Utalia who will be doing her presentation on diet and nutrition for you girls today. So you'll get a session afterwards where you go into the breakout rooms and we get to chat and discuss about everything. But first, we're going to listen to the presentation. Okay, thank you, Simone. Are we about to start? I'll share my screen. Everybody seeing my screen? Yes, we are. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to go into slideshow and we'll start. Okay, so today we are doing diet and nutrition for teen girls, especially for you. And I would like you to listen attentively. And whatever questions you have when you move into your breakout room, or maybe if Miss um, Miss Claxton will give you some time to ask a question if necessary. Okay, so we're moving on. Okay, what is nutrition? Okay, we have different um definitions of nutrition of course all of us know it's a science of foods nutrients other substances how they work in our body okay the relationship with our bodies how they keep our bodies balanced the process by which the organisms ingest digest absorb transport and utilize nutrients all of those things are the scientific aspect of nutrition nutrition is a science nutrition includes social economic cultural psychological implication of food and eating that is one part of nutrition most people don't talk about why is nutrition important especially to girls like you um as as you're young it is a time where you are growing so therefore you would need more food you would need to know what to eat in order to maintain your growth and so that you could um, grow adequately it is also a time in which there's inequality and so on. And, and um, we want to ensure poverty also, that um, 
good nutrition and health is passed on to the next generation. So you want to make sure that whatever you do, you pass it on to the next generation. You know you're the ones carrying the babies. So you would need to have very good nutrition so that your children would also have good nutrition. Nutrients. Nutrients are defined as the constituents of food which perform important functions in your body. And the six major nutrients are water. We know what water does. It dissolves and carries nutrients. Protein, which builds up our tissues and carbohydrates, which provide energy. Fat also provides energy, insulation and protection. And vitamins, that is do regulation, they do balance of nutrition, they manufacture hormones. Vitamins are very important. Minerals are very important. So too, they build bones, teeth, muscles and so on. These are the nutritional requirements for teens. You could always go online and find that. I just put that in there for you to, and to give you an awareness that this exists. So if you want to find out what is the requirement for teens, your age, it has a whole age range in here, and you will go in and you will notice it. But I will just mention the calories. Um, when you are 13, 20, 2,260, 14, 2,340. When you're 18, 2,230 calories. However, if you're an athlete, that goes up, depends on your activity. For instance, persons like Michael Phelps would need about 18,000 18, calories per day because of his swimming activities. Malnutrition. Malnutrition is an impairment of health, either from a deficiency or an excess. Most times when you're growing up, you hear people say somebody has malnutrition, and the malnutrition is usually refers to somebody that do not have enough nutrients. But there's also overnutrition, which is also considered malnutrition when you're taking too much of a, of a nutrient. So it's not only um, obesity. We have people that take too much calcium that calcifies your bones and make your bones brittle. So if you take too much of any nutrient, you may get sick. Um, potential nutrition related problems. We have poor eating habits during critical adolescent years could cause long-term health consequences, including obesity, osteoporosis, or sexual maturation delays. Obesity is one all of us know. A lot of people put on a lot of weight because they eat a lot of wrong foods, or sometimes it could be a hormonal imbalance. Obesity does not always mean that somebody has it is eating too much. It could just be they have a hormonal imbalance that needs to be addressed. So once they find out what it is, then they can do what's necessary. We have... Um, 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 eating disorders like anorexia and bulimia. Anorexia is when you, you, no matter how skinny you are, when you look in the mirror, all you see is that you're, you're fat and therefore you don't eat to prevent yourself from getting fat. You are skinny and all you see is fat. No matter what everybody tell you, you're good, you're looking good, you're not fat, you go on the scale, you're 90 pounds, but you're seeing like you're 200 pounds. Bulimia is when you are, um, after you eat, you throw up your food. All of that could cause problems with your body. Note, adolescents tend to be very conscious of appearance and may feel pressure to be thin or to look a certain way. All right, but today we're telling you, you're beautiful the way you are. If there's any problems with your health, it's time for you to fix it. There's always a way to fix something. You don't have to feel this pain. Pregnant adolescents, some people do get um pregnant when they're teenagers. That is not a death sentence also. I have a friend that was a pregnant when she had, had a baby when she was 16 and now she has a PhD in education and is teaching at the University of York. So you could see it is not a death sentence. That's You made a mistake. That's not a problem. We all make mistakes. We just fix it. We continue. We ensure that our children, the children that we bear, we get support and so on. And, she had, and that young lady is also with her in um, studying. Uh, when a teenager becomes pregnant, she needs more nutrients to support both her baby and her own continued growth because you are growing together with a baby that is growing. In her nutritional needs, uh, if her nutritional are not met, her baby may be born with impaired growth and low birth weight. So, and sometimes what it does is that you, your hair start breaking, your bones start getting soft because um, the, your baby is pulling nutrition from your own body to feed itself if you're not feeding yourself properly. Athletes. It's very important for athletes to have a balanced nutritional diet. A lot of young people are athletes and you need to eat properly. Some young athletes may be tempted to adopt unhealthy behaviors, such as crash dieting, taking supplements, or eating unhealthy foods. 
But what you need to do is make sure you eat a balanced diet. Potential um, that continues, vegetarians. We have some young people that are vegetarians. There's nothing wrong in being a vegetarian. However, you need to eat very, very carefully as a vegetarian, especially the strict vegetarians as vegans. You have to ensure that you have a balanced set of vegetables. So you have to mix your vegetables properly in order to get all the nutrient content since you're not eating any, any eggs or dairy. What is diet? Food and drink regularly consumed, which we eat in the forms of meals. The kind and amount of food prescribed for a person for a special reason. We, are, we also notice they have other diets. We know that there are people that are on low-fat diets, people that are on no salt, no flour, no all kinds of different diets nowadays. Diet influences. What influence what you eat? I have culture and religious beliefs. For instance, if you're Seventh-day Adventist or Rastafarian or Muslim, you don't eat certain, you don't eat certain meats, you don't eat meat a certain way, and so on. Economic status, whether you have the amount of, of money you have available to you, will decide what you can buy to eat. Availability, where are you from? Does they do they have that vegetable or that fruit there? What is it that they have there that you can substitute? convenience what is easy to prepare are you always on the go you don't have time to prepare a decent meal so you take what is easy to to prepare cooking skills can you cook what can you cook so these are the kind of things if you are you are chef you go you do you take in cooking classes you may have a tendency to cook foods a certain way and you can cook more things than somebody that don't know how to cook all they know how to prepare is some pasta macaroni and cheese in a box or some pasta and, 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 and tuna fish or, or, or something like that. Education, in terms of what you know, what what do you know? How, do you know how to how to mix your foods? Do you know how to eat? It's not about having PhD or anything like that. It's basically, are you educated enough about food that you can make good decisions and know how to cook it? Peer pressure, what are your friends eating? Oh, my friends are eating this, so I will eat it too. Social media, what's being advertised on TV? And I have um, others on the other side there. Emotions. What are you tempted to eat? You understand? So sometimes some people, when they're sad, they eat more or they don't eat. They, they eat based on their emotions. Meal planning. Meal planning is an art and a science. Imagine that. An art in the skillful blending of colors, textures, and flavors. A science in the wise choice of food for optimum nutrition and digestion. To help with that, different countries have designed different dietary food groups. Yes, different dietary food groups for different countries. The Caribbean Dietary Guideline. Now, we have several different dietary guidelines in the Caribbean. The ones on the screen, the breadfruit is for St. Vincent. Uh, the pineapple and tiger, the cold pot St. Lucia, the, um, the plate is Jamaica, um, the goat skin drums is Bahamas, the bowl is Guyana, um, we have Venezuela and El Salvador, Haiti, Barbados, Aruba, and El Salvador, and I think this one is Aruba. Um, Aruba. Okay, so we have different dietary guidelines. And you can find it online. You also could find it at your health departments in your countries. What are the dairy, um, dietary guidelines for your countries? Okay, and you find that, and that will help you make food choices. And you will see how. I will show you. How. We have some more. We have from Grenada, St. Kitts, and we have also from, I forget where, the, where these two countries are from. So one is, I'm sorry, Haiti, and the other one is from Belize. So different countries have the way they present the dairy dietary guidelines, all of them are not in a pyramid. Most people think that all dietary guidelines are shown in a pyramid, not so. Different countries, Finland, France, they all have this done in a different way, something that is um, related to their family, so to their, sorry, to their country, okay? All right, so the Caribbean six food groups, we're looking at the six food groups from the Caribbean. All of us are Caribbean people, we have six food groups, staples, which includes things like sweet potatoes, bananas, pasta, oats, rice, uh, legumes, which is peas and nuts and so on, and foods from animal, fish, meat, bacon, fruits, 
vegetables and fats and oils. Now, from the six food groups, I also, I sent, this will be sent to you. What are the six food groups? What are the serving sizes? What are the serving sizes? What are the recommended servings? This will be sent to you because you would need it in order to do your assignment on flipping. Okay? So next we have legumes and nuts. It has protein, carbohydrate, minerals, calcium, iron, and fiber. The servings is one to two servings. I will not go through the entire paper because you will be receiving it. Dark green, leafy, yellow, and other starchy vegetables. You need to eat your vegetables as young people you know. You're not eating your vegetables because we don't like it. You have to find ways to cook it so that you could enjoy it. Um, fruits. I hope people like fruits and they are eating their fruits. We are from a Caribbean countries. We are from Caribbean countries. We have about eight countries here. Everybody should be have access to the fruits, whatever fruits you have at the time and season, you should eat those fruits, okay? Food groups from animals, all right? Foods from animals, sorry. And um, you know what they are, two to three servings a day. You look for your, um, the amount of animal food from animals you have, that includes also eggs and milk and cheese. So it's not only fish and 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 and, and, and mix um, and and poultry and beef and so on. Also eggs and milk, yogurt, anything that is made with animal um, uh, from animal products. Sausages is also considered food from animals. Then we have fats, and we get fats in in oils, in coconut, in in some meats. There's fats. Fats are everywhere. Even in sometimes in bread, people put fat in bread. So we have hidden fats all over the place. So when you're eating, be conscious of those hidden fats. Then we have, now what I did is put the mixtures for you to make it easy for you to be able to mix your foods to eat a balanced diet. It is very easy to do that. One, we have the double mix combinations, which would be staples, cereal, and legumes. And you will be receiving that um, so that you could go through it and be able to understand it. And you're free to contact me if you're not sure of anything, if you don't understand anything. Cereal, food from animals, macaroni and cheese is also, macaroni and cheese already has all the ne um, proper nutrients. All you need to add to it is a salad. You don't need to add anything more. So some of us like to have macaroni and cheese. We want to have six different types of things on our plate. That is not necessary. Rice and peas is fine. You could just add a salad to it and that will be fine also, okay? So you could have green bananas and some salt fish or green bananas and some peas. You're already good to go. That's already have, it has the food from animal, it has the protein, sorry, it has protein. It has all your necessary nutrients in there, your starches, your minerals, your vitamins, okay? Then we have the other mixes. We have triple mix combinations, which is a staple, a legume, and a vegetable. You realize we also have vegetarian choices. It's not just only those with meats. And I try to put in Caribbean dishes, what we eat in the Caribbean. Then we could have a staple food from animals and a vegetable, or a staple food from animal and a legume, and then you have a balanced meal. So the double the double combinations are, are very um, economical. So people that have do not have much money, they can survive and eat healthy by doing the double combinations, by just knowing what foods to combine in order to get a healthy mix. And the triple mix is just about adding vegetables, more vegetables and legumes to your, to your food. Then we have the four mix combinations. This is how most Caribbean people like to eat. Things like um, a, a bouillon or um, um, kalaloo soup or stuff like that with dumplings and, and pigeon pea soup. We call it bouillon in St. Lucia. I don't know how you'll call it in, in the other countries. Can somebody tell me how they call their mixtures of, uh, they put in their meats and their stuff together in their different countries? Yeah, or somebody call it oil dung. Some people call it oil dung. What, what else? It varies. It varies, yes. So that's what I'm asking. Somebody give me a name or something we else. Soup. We call it broth. Uh -huh. We call it malap. It all, okay. it, all depends, it all depends on which area of Dominica you're from. Oh, great. Yes. So um, that so we so these will come underneath the four mixed combinations, and you notice that we have um, chicken with rice with with vegetables, and you could and and peas. So that would be your four mix. 
You understand? So you realize how easy it is to make your food healthy by following the mix, the food mixtures. Okay. Now, in what our goal for eating good food, eating nutritious food, is to remain healthy. So what is health then? Health is the condition of being sound in body, in mind and spirit, especially freedom from physical disease or pain. That's from the Webster Dictionary. We have from the Oxford Dictionary says that soundness of body of mind, that conditions in which its functions are duly and efficiently discharged. And then we have a condition or quality of human organisms expressing the adequate functioning of the organism in a given condition, genetic and environmental. All of these are describing health. Health has different dimensions, and I didn't cover all of the dimensions, just a few. Physical dimensions, what everybody sees. As, is your skin clear? Do you have bright eyes? Is your hair healthy? Is it thinning out? Or is it thick as it needs to be? Is your flesh or your skin firm, not too fat? Do you have okay breath? Your appetite? Are you sleeping? Sometimes we don't sleep. If you're not sleeping, you're not healthy. Regular activity of bowels and bladder. It's important that you go to the bathroom every day that you need to go move, do a bowel movement. And whenever you feel like going to the um, to, to, to do your to urinate, you need to do that. It's supposed to be smooth, easy flowing, and then your body should be able to coordinate all your movements. Your movement should be able to be coordinated easily. All the organisms in your body are of the ac accepted size and functions, all right? And you have the right sexual development for your age, your blood pressure, your exercise, tolerance, everything is has to be in because you need to do exercises as young people you should be moving that doesn't mean that you have to go and lift 200 pounds of weight or run 16 miles but if you like dancing you should be dancing if you like um skipping you should skip why why don't you i mean you come from school before you do your homework and your chores you could put on some music if it's dancing you like and you dance that is exercise once you get something fun to do and you enjoy what you do, you will exercise. You go outside and play some ball games. I don't know if your friends or your neighbor, but you choose something you like to do. There's so many things to do than just sit down in your phone or on your computer or on your tablet. You need to get moving as young people. Trust me, you will. You will, it will pay off when you get to our age, right? Marlene and, and Beverly and Simone <laughs> and Ricardo. <laughs> okay, good mental health is also very important. And a lot of us in the region, we do not pay attention to mental health. And, and, I, and I see that a lot in churches where people don't, don't focus on people's social and emotional health. We always think that they have a demon or something when they're showing signs of emotional and, 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 and um, um, social so issues. That's so right. <laughs> Yes, I know. We always say they have a problem, they have demons, instead of trying to find out what is the problem, especially for our children, your young people like you. If you see other young people misbehaving and they're not doing what, like, sometimes a, a young lady comes to school and she's after all the boys in the school. And you're like, what's wrong with her? She's just like, no, she's not. Sometimes she's being abused and she has been abused from since she's a little girl and she knows nothing else but that. Somebody, your um. Okay, thank you. So we need to be look, be mindful of each other's behavior and find out. I always say find a story behind the behavior. I always tell people that do not just label people based on their behaviors, but find a story behind the behavior before you label somebody in any way. Spiritual dimension, your religious beliefs, your ethics, your, the, 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 your meditation, what you believe, that needs to be healthy. Not, you know, you know, some of us are fanatics. So if you're not doing what my, what I do, then you're wrong or your, or your values are wrong. It not, yours is not always right. Okay. That's your belief. That's your belief. It makes you feel good. That's it. You keep that healthy, but do not try to make everybody like, you know, become a fanatic where you're ready to kill off people and disown people because they do not share your belief. But everybody must have their own spiritual belief, the way they, they, they connect with their, with, their, with their self, with their inner self and their inner thoughts. That's up to them to decide on how to do that. It just have to be in a healthy manner. Okay? Vocational and occupational dimension. You have to be um, 
fulfilled in that way. If, if you're not happy at, at, at where you are when it comes to, to, to your job, when it comes to your occupation, you will not feel good about it. Remember, sometimes we, 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 we choose money over, um, over, over happiness. Somebody say, well, I'm getting paid. I'll just say that I'm getting paid. But when you get home, you're miserable. You, you're unhappy. You have to be mindful of that. You at that age, you have time to think. You have time to decide. And don't be worried if you if now you don't really know what you want to do. You're young. You can try different things, do different activities until you find which one you really like and where you want to be until so that you could go into that vocation. And for me, I was working somewhere for many years. And last year, I just walked out. I didn't have no other job to go to. I just say, I don't want to be there. I'm not happy being there. I just walked out. So I'm not asking anybody to do that, but you know, I chose happiness over over staying there for money. Okay, so that's important. That is what's important to me. That may not be important to somebody. Money is more important to somebody. We have to look at um, just let me let me just some others. I'll just mention quickly. I have them at the bottom of the page. Let's look at environment. If your environment is not healthy, if you're living in a place that is dirty or it's crowded and cluttered. This is how you will feel when, you, when you're going anywhere. This place is cluttered, you, your brain is cluttered, you cannot function properly, or you're living around a, a, an area that is very dirty. Everybody there is throwing garbage in the, in the rivers, they bring garbage in the... I'm saying poverty does not mean nastiness. I always tell people that when people tell me, oh, they're poor, poverty doesn't mean you have to be nasty. There's always, we could always do something. Like if, you, if you're from a community like that, you could say, okay, you know what? Let me go to, a, to the solid waste management, the sewage management, and do a project for my community. We're going to start by cleaning our rivers or cleaning our homes, our environment. Just, just take a broom and pass. You could take some, some, some um, branches from a tree, tie it together and create a broom and clean your surroundings. You don't have to feel that because I am poor, I need to keep my place dirty. No, you can still keep your place clean even if you don't have much, okay? Uh, determinants of health. What will determine that you are healthy? What will state? And we've mentioned them before. It is the same thing for nutrition. What would influence your nutrition? What's your, your heritage, what you inherit from your parents, your environment, your lifestyle? your socioeconomic conditions, education, your occupation, political systems. That is very important. If you have a, if you live in a system that suppresses you, it will be difficult for you to be happy. For instance, in some countries, women are suppressed. They're not, they're not allowed to speak. They're not allowed to show who they are. They're not allowed to make choices. So that's why sometimes you have to feel very blessed that you have all those opportunities where you can make choices. You could decide where you, what job you do, what you work, what you wear, when you go out, when you come in. Yes, you're still young. Your parents still determine that. But by the time you're a certain age, you're free to do those things. And there are a lot of children that are not even free. Girls are not even free to go to school. Girls cannot even go to school. So right now, you're in a situation where you are allowed to do those things. So that should be important to you. Health services, look at your country, see what the health service is. Now, economic status. Now, I want you to think, when I'm saying all of those things, for you to look at the issues around your country and what you want to do. What are the areas you feel you can make a difference? What are some of the things you can start? What some of the programs you can get involved with? What's something you can do? You're not too young to start your own ministry, to start your own projects. You're not too young, and you will get support from us in this group right now, Simone, Mr. James, all the people here, Mark, Ricardo, in on Marlene and Beverly to do whatever you need to do to move forward into your different areas that you want to. Our conclusions are tips for healthy eating. Follow your country's dietary guidelines. Earlier, I mentioned that uh, you need to look at your country's dietary guidelines and see what it says. Every country has one, you look for it, and find it. I couldn't find Trinidad, unfortunately, um, Beverly. I don't know, uh, not Beverly, Simone. I don't know if there's one in Trinidad, but you should look. Increase intake of your local produce, vegetables, and fruits. Eat what you grow, grow what you eat. It's important to eat what is local and try to make different, like, like for instance, if you like macaroni and cheese, instead of using the macaroni, use some yam or use green bananas or use something that you have in your in your environment that is that you could substitute 
if you like potato salad, make some salad with breadfruit, make some salad with yams, make the same thing, the same ingredients, except the potatoes and you put the yams or sweet potatoes. If you want, you can use sweet potatoes. All right, whatever you like. So you like fries. You could make fries with logo. You could make fries with breadfruit. You could make fries with, with um. Don't eat junk food. Don't uh, eat junk but you could make fries with um um uh, an indoctrinated child talking. <laughs> you don't need um. <laughs> you could eat, make fries with all kinds of, of of our staple foods that we have in the region, and not necessarily go and buy fries at KFC. That doesn't mean you cannot do it once in a while, but you limit the amount of. Of, of fast food that you eat and you could substitute it by using what you have in your country in your region include protein containing foods in meals and snacks eat a variety of foods people don't eat the same thing every day whatever you can get you eat whatever is in season and i i mean i know some of us we're living in poor in poor situations but you could plant something find a seed take a box put some soil in it and plant some seeds in there and try to make a salad box. We call it a salad box. So you plant one one um, lettuce, one tomato, uh, some uh, cucumber plant and some and make your salad box and you plant one fruit, which is watermelon. Those things grow quickly and you just have to, you know, find a, a nice place to, to plant them. You could plant them in a box, throw your wastewater in there if you if you if you have um, issues with water. And make sure and, and, and throw all the leaves and shrubs inside of that same place where you're planting so that you could have a nice um, nutrient rich soil. Choose healthy, oh, sorry, choose healthy snacks such as vegetables and fruits or big snack instead of fried. Drink water instead of soft drinks and sugary juices or sports drinks. Prepare food at home using local produce, vegetables, and fruits. Yes. Limit foods high in sugar, sodium, or saturated fat. Limit the eating of fast foods. I said that a while ago and processed foods. And we'll find if we understand foods, you know, some a lot of us don't know. We have over about three to four thousand edible plants within the region that we have not touched, that we don't know that it is edible to and we we want to do something in that to find out what all those foods are and show people how to eat it. Yes. Eat when you're hungry. Stop when you're full. Do not eat when you're over full. The one way you can handle that is always pre-prep, pre-prep, pre sorry, your food. So you, you prepare food beforehand, you know, okay, I have to eat breakfast, lunch, dinner. In your mind, you've already decided what you're eating tomorrow. Plan your, your, your meals. Plan your meals. So you say, okay, today I have, what I have in my fridge? I have um, one pound, or if I don't have a fridge, I have one pound of salted meat and you know, I, I need to make it stretch because that's all I have for the week. I have not seen anything. You plan that. Okay, I can get some green bananas by, by this neighbor. Okay, let me get it. I have a little bit of peas. So you, you plan and you know what you have. You know what you can eat. Don't just eat everything you have and then you have nothing for the next day. You don't know what you get in the next day. So try to plan what you um, for, the, for, for your meals. Um, pay attention to your portion size. Do not eat. Do not overeat. Not because it is available for you to eat it. You could put it aside and, and do something else with it today. So if you have chicken, if, even if you buy chicken and you see you have extra chicken from the, what you cook today, tomorrow you can make you could make it into a pie. You could add it into a salad and make a chicken salad. You can also um, you could also make it into um um. You, you know, you curry it and, and, and fix it up. You just change it around. So you could you could make it into a fried rice or anything like that. Even um, your own ground provision, you could just take it, grate it, any of the ground provisions, and it will look like fried rice. So the same thing, you know, the way you do fried rice instead of rice, you use your ground provision. You just grate it up and put all the same ingredients you'd make, you, you put in it to make a fried rice. So not because you don't have rice, you cannot make something that looks like fried rice. Trust me, when it's cooked, you would not even know it's not fried rice. Okay, so basically, this is what I have for you today. Thank you very much. When you go into your breakout room, you'll get more information and we'll discuss more in depth. It's just a brief introduction into nutrition. And uh, I think it's very handy as to what you can do to ensure that you eat healthy. Thank you so much. Thank you very, very much, Italia. Wonderful presentation reminding us about our diet and nutrition, making wise choices, which is linked to our health and taking care of ourselves. 
something which we have to start to do from young uh, teens, uh, you know, so that we will be, when we reach our age, Italia, yes. we'll be healthy, <laughs> you know, and because as, as a young teen, you know, you take things for granted. And then when you get older in your 40s, 50s, and then you start to um, have pains and aches and this disease starts to pop up and you're wondering why, it's because of the choices you've made uh, with your diet and nutrition, lifestyle, exercise, etc. whilst you were younger, not drinking enough water, having too much, you know, mm -hmm. um, fast foods, fried foods, etc. Okay, so we have to make wise choices. So very thankful to you, Talia, for that presentation. Okay, so good morning, everyone. So I'm here to do a task. So I'm doing a little very gentle and soft look. I'm doing some skincare. So let me introduce myself very quickly. I'm Giselle James. I am a cosmetologist. So once you hear cosmetologist, I deal with hair, skin, mani pedis, face makeup. I am an instructor. I'm a beauty culture instructor. So I teach young ladies like yourself to get into the field of cosmetology. I teach synergy and I also teach community development. So I'm more into the educating sector of the of this aspect. Normally I used to stand behind the chair, but then I get tired of that. So I say too many young people coming into the industry and not having much knowledge. So I say, let me go out there and educate. So I'm educating now. So I am here to do some Give you some tips on some skincare. So I'm going to do a little small cleanse tone moisturize. Give you some tips on how to take care of your skin at a tender age. So let's start. So first step, I am going to cleanse. So sometimes um, and I know most of you would be cleansing. So let me hear, see what do you use to cleanse your face. So let me hear you. What do you use to cleanse your face? You have at home and you're cleansing. So what you use to cleanse your face or clean your face as you would know? Uh, I use a soap, black, right, soap, black soap. soap. Right. Who else? Yes. Cleanser. Cleanser. Who said cleanser? Who said that? Right. Christina. Okay, nice. Very good. I use face mask. Wipes. Wipes. Okay, all right. I good. use a cleanser and apple cider vinegar. Mm. But I want you to be very careful. So the person that says apple cider vinegar, let me see you. Now apple cider vinegar is acidic. You do not want to use so much acidic product on your feet. You have to be very careful with that. Now you can use the apple cider vinegar providing you have a lot of acne and you want to help with that process. But constant use, use of the apple cider vinegar can be very dangerous to your skin. So take a note of that. Now another thing with the soap. Soap tends to leave a layer on your skin. Now sometimes soap is all you have. So I, so the people that are using the soap, you can just wash your face with bare water. That helps. No product at all. Because I'm sure for those of you who are using the soap, you are not using makeup. So simple water. Just wash your face with plain water. It helps a lot. Yeah, yeah. It sounds strange, eh? But it will trust me. Plain water. Yeah. Any questions? Does no? the water what have to be at any temperature? So tell me, sorry, I didn't get that. Is the water at like room temperature or warm room temperature, or temperature? Yes, room temperature. Now, if you're using warmer water, it's warmer water. It tend to open up your skin, open up your pores. So if you are using warmer water, let's say you want to do a exfoliant or as we know it, like a scrub. So what that will do, that will take out the dead skin. So let's say months you haven't done, done anything with your face. You have some acne, you have some dryness of your skin, you'd use an exfoliant. So it's like a scrub where you'll have some fine granules. Now, if you have no scrub, simple as brown sugar. Sugar that you'd use to sweeten your tea, you can use that. But you'll have to put that into your blender to get the grains a little softer because the grains are so coarse and hard, you don't, don't want to use that rough sugar grains on your face. So you can put it in your blender for a little bit to kind of smooth and 
arms get the grains a little, you know, softer. You don't want that coarseness. You can add a little honey with it to give that skin that nice, bright, radiant glow. Yeah, even milk. You can add a little spoonful, teaspoon of milk with it to give it a piece. And you apply that onto your face. Yeah, simple thing that you can get in your home. Simple as turmeric. Turmeric is a yellow thing like saffron. Sometimes you have discoloration on your face. So let's say you have a pimple and you keep on digging and picking and you leave a big scar. You can use turmeric. Turmeric and milk and those stuff helps clear the discoloration of your face. So I'm seeing Miss Marilyn. Yes, I also, I mix the sugar with coffee and oh, blend it together right. and yes. turmeric. Yes. But you have to be careful with the mixer. You don't want those grains to be too coarse. You want no, that? I blend it. Good, blend very it. good, yes. So the grains are softer, yes, very good, yes. So sugar and coffee, yes, you can use that. That's correct. Yeah, any other question? No? So I'm just going to cleanse my face. So I have this facial cleanser. We have this product here. It's called Arista. So it's a facial cleanser that I do not need to get up to go and wash it. So it's a cleanser that I can use a cotton pad. One of these and just remove it right here. I'm cleansing. So let me apply and show you. So just a little bit, probably a drop. So I'm spreading it. I'm not rubbing it in like I'm rubbing moisturizer, but I'm just spreading it. Onto my entire face. And I'm using the cotton pad now to remove it. So you can see, see me going in and to massage it in. So I'm using the cotton pad now to just remove it. So this is what I'm doing here. It's a cleanser. So I use one side. I'm turning the other side. Right, so I'm toning. Now I have toner, this toner, masala water. I also have caramel toner. But toner depending on your skin type. So some people would use toner because it's a toner, but it's not a one size fit all. So toner tends to hydrate the skin, it gives the skin. So simple as rose water. This is another toner. People would normally use this rose water in food. Yeah, rose water. Sometimes you come home and you just put this rose water. You miss it on your face. So let's say you have a shower. You miss it on your face. After you do that, you um, could put some coconut oil. But you're putting the coconut oil on the face after six. You don't want that heat to burn that coconut oil. So you do not put the coconut oil on your face during the day and go out there shopping. No. You put the coconut oil on your face afternoon time. So I'm just going to turn a little bit. So after cleanse, you turn. So you can either tone with the cotton pads or you can mess your toner on and leave it there for a while. Sometimes I like misting it on and just letting it air dry. Right, so after we cleanse tone, we are going to moisturize. So there are different types of moisturizer. So from the Caramia brand, I have this moisturizer. So this is cream form. So I also has a rose hip oil, which is also a good moisturizer. So what rose hip oil does, it helps with discoloration, uneven skin tone. Moisturize. So I have some uneven skin tone. 
normally I would use this moisturizer for people who has very dry skin. But I have oily skin, so I do not like using it. It, it makes me too oily. I normally use rose hip. I started using this about a week now. So I had some discoloration. Now, simple as holding your phone. You have your phone. And you are constantly holding your phone there. The radiation in that phone tends to give you some discoloration. And I am constantly on a phone and I noticed it was happening to me. So I started to use this rose hip oil to kind of clear my discoloration. Sometimes the mask, not washing your mask, you tend to get mask knee, like acne from your mask. So I started to get some, you know, sometimes you're in a house, you grab a mask, acne from the mask. So I'm using this rose hip to clear up. So I'm using it as my moisturizer as well. Just a few drops. You rub that into your skin. You don't want your face to be too oily with it. So you rub, so this is what you rub into the skin. Don't forget your neckline and you moisturize. Now, when you do exfoliant, like the brown sugar and the coffee, these moisturizing products is like a, so your exfoliant or your scrub, as we would say it, with your brown sugar and your coffee is like a power washer. So it's like you're cleaning the, you take a power washer and you clean the concrete. When you see you put these, um, the oils and your moisturizer, it goes in to your skin. It doesn't just stay on the layer there, but it goes straight into your skin and that is what you need. Because sometimes people would say, um, you're putting so much of product on your face and your face still dry, but you need to remove those dead skin from your face to help that product go in and soak into your skin. It's like your hair. Sometimes it's so much thing you're using and no matter what you put on the hair, it's still dry. But sometimes are you drinking enough water? And this water is it also goes with your skin. Lack of water tend to show through your skin. You see a set of um, dryness at the side of your nose, at the side of your mouth, and you're wondering what it is going on. Sometimes you scratch the surface of your skin and it's not so it's a little dusty. Lack of water. So remember, whatever internal tend to come out. So by you drinking, so sometimes you will take care of the outer, but you're not taking care of the inner, which is your body, which is the temple. So you need to take care of this temple in order for things to show through. It's like a tree, a plant a tree, and you just leave it. You're not nurturing it. It will die. Eventually it will die. Right? So any questions so far? Am I going too fast? You all understand it? Yes. All right. Very good. Very nice. Right. So I was told that some, most of you are under 15. So I'm not going to do too much of our makeup. I don't want to encourage you all. Now, once you are 18 years and over, then you can start to dabble into the makeup. Now, as you are under 15, take care of this thing called your skin. Which, yeah, go ahead. May, may I ask a question or something I realized that when you rub in your face, you use a certain direction? Um, yes, I do. Now you're trying not to rub your skin down because you don't want premature hanging. So I try to lift and rub. Lift right. and rub. Okay, you thanks. Know, simple as your eyes. So me as a professional makeup artist, you would need eye shadow primer. Now people have this habit of taking this brush and you're just pulling down. Obviously you'll have premature hang eyelids. You don't want that. So you know you take your time and you tap your stuff on. Even your foundation, you tap it on. People just love to rub down, rub down. And it's like your neck. You have to be very mindful with that. Remember, constantly doing something would show the result afterwards. Eh? I have a question. Yeah, go ahead, Dottie. Uh, do we have to put sunscreen 
screen. Sunscreen, you're asking, right? Yes, that's very important. Now, we in the Caribbean, we think our skin is so, we have dark skin and we really don't need the sunscreen. Mm -hmm. That's for those who, in, who are of lighter complexion. But yes, we do. Because remember, the sun is so harsh on our skin. By us not protecting our skin, it shows, it shows. So sunscreen is very important. Even though you're going on the beach, put sunscreen on. And some of your products, some of your facial products, like your cleansers and stuff, not your cleansers, your moisturizer, sorry, has a SPF. So always look for products. So sometimes you would think you are not, um, you are not, Okay, so you're, you're not disciplined enough to put your sunscreen on. Look for product that has the SPF in it. It is very important for your skin. Your skin is such a gentle thing, eh? That you need to take care of it. And if you are not taking care of your skin from young, when you get older, you would see the result of you not taking care of your skin. Now, thank God for those who have oily skin like myself, we do not age quickly. Our skin do not get wrinkled because of our the oils. So for those of you who has oily skin, try not to lose the oils, lose the luster. And those of you who has dry skin, take care of it. Dry skin can change in the sense that it can change to probably combination. It may not get as oily as mine, but it can change by you constantly drinking enough water, by you adding moisture to your face on a daily basis. So always remember that. So I see in Kalia. Okay, so and you know how sunscreen has, I think it's SPF, they call it. Yes. So a certain number. What is the recommended number of SPF you should buy? There's no particular. Once it's SPF, you know you're in the game. So there's no particular number. But once the SPF is most important. Very good question. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So after I apply the cleanser, toner, moisturizer, I am going to do a little brow, very light foundation and powder and some gloss. With a little mascara, something very simple. So for your brows, you can use three things. You can use pencil, which is eyebrow pencil. Pencil. You can use brow pomade, as they would say it, or brow gel. So it looks like this. This is the cover of it. Now, this is a low-end brand, which is LA Gale. They are different brands. They are different. Colourpop, they are local brands that we have here. Ambrosia, they are different brands. I like this LA Gale. It lasts longer. It doesn't dry up. Sometimes you would forget it open, and it, you know for sure you could come back and it's not dry. I prefer gel, though. I do not like pencil because I have greasy eyebrows. So probably by next two hours, my eyebrows would look greasy. So the gel kind of keep me somewhat mattish. And you also have powder. Powder, as you can use eyeshadow powder, or you can use brow powder to keep those brows, to get those brows in place. But before I um, add anything, I want to put on a little primer on my face, because as I mentioned, I'm very oily. So I need to put on a little primer, which is a face primer. So I'm using e.l.f. primer. So it's L40 primer. It looks like this. So I apply it like how I'd apply my moisturizer and I rub in. So this will kind of give me that kind of matte, matte effect. But because I'm doing such a subtle, it will be somewhat dewy, but not matte, like matte, matte. 
so my, my skin would look somewhat radiant. Wouldn't look too mattish. So I'm using my brow gel to give my eyebrows some definition, some shape. So if you are using your if you are using your um pencil, you do not need a brush. But because I'm using brow gel, I need a brush. So let me show you. Angle brush, right? Very good, very good. And be smoothie. Very good. I see you guys know some stuff there, man. Is it Akoi? Very good. Very good. Dirty, yeah. So what I like to yes, yeah. So what I like to do, get my eyebrows in place. Let me just so, so get my eyebrows in place. You know, so I brush my hair into the direction it's growing. So which is to the tail or closer to the end, that direction. So you try to kind of groom your eyebrows in place and get it there. Now, you do not want to add extra eyebrows. Now, most of you have a lot of eyebrows. This is just for the adults who play the fool with their eyebrows and have no eyebrows now. You, you tweeze out, or as we know it, you pluck out all the eyebrows. When you're young, you shave out all the eyebrows, you, you know? So you are using the natural shape of your eyebrows. So for those of you who has plenty of eyebrows, you do not need to fill your eyebrows. So I'll show you where you're stuck. So as for me, I need eyebrows. So you are taking the natural line of your eyebrows. Take your time, you're going as close as possible to the natural line of your eyebrow. First step. So wait, I missed something. So in order for you to know exactly where your eyebrows need to start, where it need to end. You see your nose bridge, your first line. From the edge of your nose, straight line. So you hold a pencil and you mark it off there. So your first line is supposed to be right there. Some people has naturally eye, natural eyebrows that is joined together, which is unibrow. So as you get older, you'll be allowed to wax, so you'll be allowed to shave. So you clean that off, the unibrow, so your eyebrow. So what, when you wax or shave that off, it gives you some nose bridge. So now, as you see it, your you you that here that joined it, it will somewhat narrow down your nose bridge. So you measure to the edge of your nose, straight there. So that's where your eyebrows stop. That's where it starts. Sorry, you are kind of slanting it somewhat. So it's like you're looking straight ahead. So right there. So sometimes you can average. You can look at your eyebrows and kind of get midway to know where your arch, so where your high point, or where you go up to give you that nice arch. To the end, to the edge of your nose, to the end of your eyes. You see right to the end there, that is where your eyebrow stops. Some people love to carry this eyebrow straight down to the, to the, to the air loop. No, you do not drag your eyebrows that low. Sometimes you tend to kind of have droopy eyes by the way you drag your eyebrows. So you kind of, to the edge of your nose, right to the side of your eyes. So as you can see it, I probably may need to go down a little more. Right there. Right there. So, to the, so this is my first line. Second line, you kind of go midway. And you connect from the top to the bottom. Just that. Then you continue to the top. Remember, you're not drawing all your eyebrows too wide and too big. So you all are seeing that. You are leaving somewhat like a 1 8 to the front. You do not want to have your front to boxy. So 1 8, and then you start to fill in from the tail go up. So you take your time and you fill in by not adding too much product. Remember, you want your eyebrows to look as natural as possible. Have you guys noticed from the time somebody looks at you, well, this is for the grown, the more grown or adult folks. From the time somebody looks at you, this is where they look, this area. From the time somebody looks at you, this is where they look. 
nowhere else. Your lips could be how trashy they look at your eyes. So your eyes. So to the front of my eyebrows, now I'm taking my spoolie and I'm brushing it in the opposite direction, which is closer to my nose bridge because I want that nice soft faded look to the front there. So I have, I have, I naturally have a slit in my eyebrows. So I normally fill that in. And I'm brushing out. So let me just come a little closer. So look at me right there. Soft to the front and gradually it started to darken. Okay. So let me do the other side. Same thing under as close as possible to your eyebrow. Same thing with the top. You draw to the top and you connect. You leave about a one eighth to the front. You start to fill. And you soften to the front with your spoolie in the opposite direction. Now, if I want a more crispier look, I would go in with some concealer. Because sometimes, okay, so we in lockdown in Trinidad here, we have no hairdresser or barber to go to clean up. So what your concealer does, it camouflage. You have dark circles on there, your concealer camouflage that. You have hair that is all grown under your eyebrows. Your concealer camouflage that. So, so I'm going to come clean up under to give me that nice crisp look under my eyebrow there. So I'm using a brush like this, which is a flat concealer brush. It looks like this. Right, flat with my concealer. So I'm seeing this, is it? Ah, Koi, she is in the game with this makeup. She has her concealer, <laughs> so I'm using two shades lighter than my complexion to give me that highlighted look. Because when you see a shave or your waxy eyebrows, you have this nice highlighted look. So I'm using two shades lighter to give me that nice highlighted look. So I do not apply it with my concealer brush, but I use a, I do not apply it with my concealer applicator, I should say. Sometimes this could be very messy and you squeeze too much. So I want control, so I would apply it with my brush. So I put a, I put in a, I'm putting a little bit. Remember you can add, but you cannot take away. So add a little at a time and then you can add more if needed. So you take your time and you go in as close as possible. So this kind of gives you a nice crisp. So if you look at the both sides, it gives you a nice kind of definition. Same thing I'm doing with the other side, as close as possible. Now, some people may not have the art of getting their both eyebrows evenly. So sometimes one eyebrow is always higher than the other. Always remember your eyebrows are not twins, but they are sisters or they are cousins. So don't frustrate yourself to get them the same way. Even some twins don't even look the same way. So try not to frustrate yourself about getting it, you know, the same shape. So because I'm not doing much of make, much makeup, I can use this concealer as my base or primer for my eyes. So I'm taking my time there and pressing that concealer in. So it's my primer for my eyes. So it's like me creating a very smooth canvas so that my eyeshadow application can be applied there. 
So I'm doing the same with the other eye. So any questions as we go along? No? Okay, so I'm taking my concealer from my left eye and I'm joining it with my right eye. In that way, I would have to, I would see the height of my eyeball. So I would know they are both in the same line. So I'm taking my time and I'm, now if you see me looking straight ahead, I have a mirror right in front of me here. So this way I would know my eyebrows on the same level. Don't worry, trust the process. All of these, we're cleaning it up. I'm just adding a little more primer, a little more concealer. Now you may see my hand moving fast, but it's not um, rough. But it's just a quick application because I know we're on time. Your eyes are very gentle, so you need to take your time and apply not rough gentle movements so we need to clean up the top to have the top looking nice and smooth so before you make up is a trend and it's always something new so before we used to use two shades darker now we would use two shades lighter to give you that nice pop but now we would use two shades darker because you don't want to use the same shade which is lighter over the top you'll have this this halo look and you don't want that reflection it's okay to have the halo down to the bottom and brighten under your eyes but on top you want this to blend in seamlessly and nice with your foundation so what i would normally do i would go in with some foundation so i'll use my shade of foundation for on top Same thing as close as possible to your eyebrow. So look at it. It kind of gives the eyebrow some definition. It neatens it up. So sometimes you'd have fine hair on top there as well. This helps to cover that. Concealer helps cover blemishes and marks and that kind of thing, discoloration. I would go in with a blending brush or a buffer brush, which is a small fluffy brush that looks like this to soften the top there. So by the time I'm finished blending, you cannot tell that I use anything on top here because it looks like skin. Now under you would see it because it's lighter, but on top you can hardly tell. So I'm taking my time and just pressing the concealer down here because I want this to be very smooth. I'm removing the line that I made to the front there. Sometimes you may need to go back in to just, you know, clean up and correct because sometimes your concealer can, your concealer can remove some of your product from your eyebrow. So you just may need to fix that. So just like this. Now, because I'm using a water base, um, concealer I need to set. I don't want to crease so that when I put on my eyeshadow I look creasy. So I'm just setting it with some Sasha setting powder which is a white translucent powder. So I'm also pressing that onto my eyebrows in that way my eyebrows would not look oily or creasy.
Now, a tractor note, you can also use your satin powder over your whole entire face. So because I am oily, I can go take a very thin layer of my satin powder and go over my whole entire face to give me that kind of matte finish. So I just need to go in here a little bit to my elbow. Right, so I'll, I'll take some satin powder, go into my, go over my entire face. So kind of give me a kind of, you know, not so oily. I'm just pressing. To take away some sheen a little bit. So there are always tips and tricks you can use. So this may not work for everybody. Let's say you have dry skin, it may not work for you. But if you have oily skin, definitely it can work. So it's a basic eye look. So I'm just going to put a little brown eye shadow on my lid. This brown. So I'll start off with this transition color first, this one. And then I'll go in with the brown to the end. So simple. Right in your crease area, very soft. So it's like if you are applying it windshield wiper, left, right, left, right, very simple. So I press first to get my color deposit into my lid, on my lid, sorry. You don't want to wipe off too much of your product just yet. So you press with a transition, very soft and subtle. So this is a very beginner friendly look. So then I take my time when she wipe left and right, right there. Right under that, I'll go in with a little cocoa brown or chocolate brown. Just to intensify the color a little bit. Right there. So it gives you a little transition between your Primer, your yeah, eyeshadow primer. It doesn't look just normal. Same, I'll do the same on the other side. Transition color first, which is the lighter brown. Take my time and blend all that edges. You don't want any harsh edges. Very subtle. And then I just go and intensify just a little bit with the cocoa brown. And that's it. I use a little black gel liner. So I use brown on my eyebrows. I'm using black now. Or you do not even have to use. Okay, so let me not use a liner. I'll just use some mascara. I'll just use some mascara. So I'm using Revlon. Yeah. Dramatic definition. You can use any mascara of your choice. So 
So on your eyelashes, you go down and then out. So it's like a, a click of the wrist, a wrist movement. For under, you go under and out. You can go and sometimes you may very rare see your eyelashes. Some people may not have too much eyelashes. You can take the tip of the brush and kind of got and you can it's like you kind of giving them some definition to find them first and then you would take your wrist and pull out. You do the same under tip of the brush. And you pull out. So if you look at this side of the eyes, it looks way different to the other side. Same thing, take your time. So that's it with the eyes. So the foundation I'm using, sorry, it is Revlon Super Stick. Very nice foundation. And you can get your shade in this foundation. It's a 24 hour wear and it is full coverage. Very nice. Now these are foundation brushes. You do not have brushes. You can use wedges, sponges, beauty blenders. So you don't have. You can use sponges, which is like this. It looks like cheese. But always remember when you're using sponges and brushes, you damn them. You do not want your product to soak up into your brushes So you or your sponge. So this is a beauty blender. From the time it's wet, it expands. So I'm using this brush, which is a buffing brush. I like to get my product in, so I use a buffing brush. I hardly use sponges. So I'm using some water spray bottle. I'm just missing it so that my product do not absorb too much into my brush. I rest my foundation here. Normally I have a palette. I'd normally put the foundation on. But because it's me I'm using it on, I can use it here and I'm warming up the product a little bit, which is the foundation. I do not tip my brush like this into the foundation. By me doing this, all this product would be absorbing into this brush. So I'll use the same brush that I use for my eyebrows onto the face, you know, to spread that product nicely and evenly onto my face. Take my brush and I press that product in. Under the eyes. You remember, technique is very important. Eh? Your technique is very important. By you taking your time and getting that product in, you are not rubbing it out. Because by you rubbing, it would be like you're rubbing off your moisturizer and all of that, your primer and all of that. So you need to press and set that product in. I will take the product from my jawline and just drag down to my neck. You notice I didn't put any more product, but just the excess on the brush to give my neck that even flow. Sometimes you take out pretty and you look your neck a different color to your face because it just stop right there and that's it. So if you look at here, how it's nice and flawless. Unlike here, you know. So let's fix this area.
Don't forget your ears. Your ears is very important. Very, very important. Sometimes we do the whole face and the ears. Oh, they're very shiny. Your ears is very important. Go straight as go up into your hairline as well. So when you are done, you have this nice seamless finish. And there you have it, you can see. So the same brush I am using, I would use to put some powder on. I'm setting with some black opal powder, finishing powder. So I'm just pressing, pressing the same way, pressing. So I'm sure you can start to see the matteness that it's creating here, or like the dewiness on the side. Now, some of you who don't have oily skin, you can just go in with your powder. So just have that nice polished look. But if you are like me, that you are out all day, you need that extra coverage and you need that makeup to stay. So I am just going to put on just a little regular lip gloss. So I'm using Ashley. A lip gloss, I think it's tea tree, yeah, lip treatment. So it's like a lip gloss. Normally I like to just go in and line my lips a little bit to give my lips some definition. and just apply. And just like this. Now, you may ask, after all of this, how are you removing this? So, when I'm done, I just like to do a little rose water. The same um, toner, just miss. You know, to set. Normally, you can take your brush and just press that in, or you can leave it to just evaporate. Now, you're wondering, how are you cleaning off all of this when you're finished? The same process that we use for the I find this, uh, is it Akoi? You well know your makeup stuff, yes, very good. <laughs> yes, so you are using your cleanser. So first I do not just go over my face basin and wash off. Your face basin tends to look too mucky with all this makeup. So I use wipes, some facial wipes, and remove it. Sorry, one second. 
sun, use some facial wipes. Remove. Go in with my either micellar water with my cotton pad. Or I go in with my cleanser. So you cleanse, tone, moisturize. Just as the same way you would have started. And you clean that makeup off. To be extra sure that everything is off, you go back over with our wipes after you do all that process. Then you'd know, okay, my face is fully clean. So, any questions? Is that for those who don't like have maybe foundation and powder, they can just um, do the process and put the powder alone. If you don't have right. foundation, right? Alone. Yes, yes, yes. Some people don't like anything on their eyes. They can even skip the eye step. So you just put your powder on and you put a little lip gloss on. But you need to protect your lips, even though you use them. Let's say you use them matte lipsticks, like Sasha matte velvet or any one of these. You need to at least put a little probably some petroleum jelly on your lips to protect your lips just before you apply the matte lipstick. You can wipe it off. At least your lips is moisturized, and then you apply your matte lipsticks. Okay, great. See, Dorothy has been following the steps, sir. Eh? Listen, pretty much, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And she seems to have a lot of stuff. Nice. <laughs> well, what about those with some nice thick eyebrows? I saw um, Anjali, Anjali Phillips. She has nice thick eyebrows. She might not need to put on any, um, right, right. Anjali? Right. So what you do is just conceal and clean up with the mm -hmm. concealer to give that definition. I mean, even wax. I even wax too. But I have a unibrow too, but I don't even wax. Oh. Okay. Yeah, she has nice eyebrows, yeah? Doesn't need to put any eyebrows. Even Shalini. Shalini. Kana as well. She has very nice yes. eyebrows. Yeah? Shalini has thick eyebrows. Yes. yes. So no questions, guys? What about the other ladies? Denise, you okay? I don't really have a question, but um, I'm past the age of 18 and um, I was never really interested per se in makeup, mm -hmm. but I found this session to be very informative oh, and nice. I thank you. You're most welcome. You're most welcome. You're most welcome. Hi, um, it's not a question, but I would, um, I'd appreciate if you could give some more tips on the lips because that's something that I personally just leave out. Okay, so let me touch on the lips a little bit. Now, with your lips, your lips is an asset. Back then, your lips was, everybody was, you know, people would give you fatigue about, oh, your lips so thick, your lips so this. Have you noticed there's so much surgeries done to give you that nice plum lip? So, sis, with those big thick lips, embrace them, sis. Embrace them. You all have beautiful lips. So, us Afro individuals, we need to embrace those thick lips. Normally, so let's say your lips are too thick, you can go in with a liner. Most times, a brown eyeliner or lip liner. Now, even though you have eyeliner, don't frustrate yourself and go out there thinking, okay, I have an eyeliner. I cannot use eyeliner on my lip. Makeup, there's no rule. Yes, you can use an eyeliner on your lip. You can even use the brow gel that I'm using for your eyebrows on your lip. So you want to minimize. So let's say, oh, you have too much lips. You want to minimize. You can line. Always remember when lining, it gives you definition. But if you are lining your lips, you do not go over your lip. So it's like there's a line on the inner part of your lip. That is your guide. Take your time and go in with your lipstick or go in. Because people with thicker lips believe because my lips so thick, we cannot use lipstick. So let's pop those lips with those lipsticks. You just try not to use too much of shiny stuff. Use more matte so that it will, wouldn't give you too much attention where the lip is concerned. Some people lips are out of proportion, meaning bottom are bigger or top are bigger. You can also give it some definition where, so let's say the bottom is bigger than your top, 
you can go over your lip line to give it an illusion that you has it looks even then it's even proportion i hope you understand that so your lips is an asset on your face so lining is very important always try to line let's say you don't have liner but you have lipstick so you have a darker shade you have a darker shade so let's say you have two shades like a darker shade and a lighter shade you can use your darker shade as your liner and your lighter shade to line so sorry as your lipstick so it will come like a blend or you can get an ombre darker on the outside lighter on the inside i hope you understand that hello yes beverly hi um thank you for this session i'm not i'm not a makeup person to be honest with you i don't wear makeup um and then but um i, I heard you talk about the face and washing the face with water uh, um that's what i normally just wash my face with water and use a lot like we have some local oils here that we use um that are made naturally so i use the natural stuff or if i do use soap i use turmeric um i do not use i don't use makeup number one i really you don't even feel i don't feel comfortable in way I, I didn't grow up using them and at the same time because i do not want to put it and make a mess out of it so i prefer to just play it safe but i really want to thank you for sharing all these tips one of the things that you said in terms of don't wash down wash up i didn't even know that so thank you so much for taking your time and share all these tips a lot of things we take for granted that we just do things without even realizing the signs behind it so thank you for sharing, and um, I know the young girls probably enjoy that because they also make their makeup and stuff like that. So thank you very much. You're most welcome. You're most welcome. Yes, Miss. Um, my question was if it is fine to stain your face after you have cleansed the makeup of your face. Okay, so is it stain your face you are saying? Yes, Miss. To steam. Oh, what's the steam? I'm not steam. too sure. Steam. If I to understand. steam, like a heat. Steam your face. Steam. Yes. 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 So it's like a steam. Yes. But remember, when you do those stuff, you cannot put on makeup after, unless it's a 24 to 48 hours. Because remember, your pores is open. That is just like you do the exfoliant. Your pores is open, so whatever product you put in goes into your pore. So once you do a facial steam. You do not put on makeup 24 hours, 24 to 48 hours. Good. Last chance, girls. Rounding up the session now. Well, thank you very much, Miss Giselle. Oh, Ricardo, go ahead. Most welcome. Yeah, hi guys. Uh, not necessarily in the category of young ladies, but I do have a question. No Actually, I'm not in the category at all, but <laughs> I, I've found myself in positions where I'm doing a lot of recording lately and Instagram lives and that type of thing. But I am not, uh, <laughs> I'm not, uh, I don't wear makeup. All right. Do you have any advice for what I could do in terms of uh, just facial prep? That is not makeup, even if it's um yes. using a cleanser or um, something, because I don't want to come across like over greasy, but I also mm. don't want to come across as the guy who put on makeup to do a recording. I know, I understand. Yes, yes. for anybody, be it male or female, I always recommend that you take care of your skin. So instead of using your same soap that you use, which is your bath soap, you can use a facial cleanser a toner and a moisturizer but it all depends on your skin and it doesn't mean because you are oily you will not use a moisturizer so i can't even recall if i saw you to see if you have facial hair but oh, yeah you, I, I, you, I do. you do facial hair right trying to get a camera on yeah. <laughs> but you can there's facial um cleanser that you can use so in that way it helps um Right, okay, right, I'm seeing you there. Right, so you have beard here, right? You can also, do you shampoo your hair, the beard I've, hair? I've started. I didn't realize that you could get um, dry scalp on your chin. Right, listen. And some people have all this here on their face and not knowing. Sometimes you separate that 
and there's dry, it's dry under. Simple mm. as using oils, like your coconut oil and that kind of thing helps. And the hair on the your beard, it will change the texture. Sometimes you pass your hand and you'd notice it falling or that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. By you taking care of it, you would see the difference. Yeah. So yeah, yeah you can use facial yeah, cleanser, tone moisturizer, simple, simple. Even coconut oil at night. That's when all would help. You put it on your face and you just pass it straight down on your beard. Thank you. You're and most welcome. Young ladies, you could tell your male counterparts, even if it's a big brother <laughs> or uncle or somebody. But thank you for thank you for that. You're welcome. All right. Thanks very much. I'm so glad Ricardo asked that um that question because it really does apply. Sometimes we think, you know, just females, but it does apply to men as well to, you know, cleanse, tone, moisturize. You know, they can yeah. get their cleansing wipes and stuff and just do something basic, you know. So I'm I'm really glad for that. So so ladies can share, you know, with their um well spouses, the older ones, with their fathers, you know, uncles, brothers, you know, cousins and stuff like that and um get the information out there. Thank you very much, Mr. Giselle James. It was really a wonderful yeah. session. I think it's always very enlightening to me, you know. I'm not really a makeup person, but um, you know, it's, it's good to, to know the little tips. Um, Beverly, please I have a question, please. Right. Yes, Beverly. Um, is that toner very good to use? Um, I they call it cucumber witch hazel. Is it is an alcohol free toner? Is that a very good toner to use? Yes, it is. Which is the it is. I was telling Simone last night. Back then, which is so was very reasonable, but because of the fact there are so many people now into the beauty industry, which is so went rocket high. Well, I'm not sure the prices of it in your country, but mm. it is expensive where we are here. But yes, it is. And those were the first cleanse, they, those were the first toners out. So it's very okay. good to use. All right, then. Thank you. You're most welcome. All right. Rose water, trust me, as simple as you see this rose water, it's oh, very good. Let me see. It's, it's an astringent also. So this is more on the lower end, but it's very good. So very rose good. water, wheat hazel, and what is the other one? So if you're using rose water, you don't need to use it with hazel. So it's either oh. one or okay. the other. All right, then. thank you. The other one would have been the toner from Caramia. And then we have the masala water. Okay. All right. Thank you. So one or the other. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Thanks. So we have some simple stuff, you know, even if people can't afford some of the products, you know, um, simple things like the rose water that they could apply as a toner. Yeah. Yeah. Coconut oil for moisturizing, you know. That's right. I, I sent the girls um, on the email an attachment with some DIY um, stuff that they can use so girls go into the document have a look at um all the various you know coconut oils maybe avocado if you want to do like a little mask and stuff like that that you can use from your household you don't have to go out specifically to buy Maybe things. Aloe, vera too. Buy aloe vera as well yeah so if you have aloe vera downstairs or outside yeah. in your garden um you pick some you could use that on your face Google up some nice DIY recipes in addition to the ones that I sent and, um, you know, use those to help take care of your skin from now. Those who are allowed to wear makeup or a little, you know, foundation, powder, etc. Um, you know, do so just, you don't need much, you know, because you're beautiful just the way you are. It's just a, a little touch up, you know, those who are allowed to, to do it and who, I mean, like, because not everybody likes, you know, likes makeup. Guys, so this was a really wonderful, wonderful session. Um, I think today went, went really well. Um, that, that's my opinion. I'm not sure what you guys thought. Anybody have any sentiments as to how today went? Any comments? All right. Um, yes, I do have a comment. I enjoyed today's session, especially the diet and nutrition, which actually motivated me to eat healthier more often and rather choosing healthier food than junk food and I also enjoyed the makeup session especially when it came to the eyebrow grooming part 
and doing your eyes because I personally don't like to add any foundation to my face. I just like to do a good skincare so my skin already looks smooth, but I love to take care of my eyes and my lips and my eyebrows so they really look nice. I'm very thankful for this session. I really enjoyed it. Thank you.